big old thing is the fourth generation Kia Sorento, with every model in the Sorento range now being electrified to one extent or another. And this model is actually a plug-in hybrid, which can apparently achieve around 176 miles per gallon. All right, that's not gonna happen, but plug-in hybrids are still a great way for workplace or school run commuters to save on shorter journeys and are arguably the best, easiest to live with electrified solution out there at the minute anyway. So where does the humble Kia brand fit into the plug-in hybrid seven-seat arena? Well, Kia wants to be taken seriously and it deserves to be. I mean, it's had several years of solid, reliable models. But is Kia really ready to disrupt upmarket brands? And are you gonna pay 54 grand for a Kia? So does its interior match its road domineering exterior? Well, yeah, I'd say so. Kia is clearly trying to make an effort to make things more premium. And you've got this large 10 inch touchscreen. You've got this Jag like gear selector down here, loads of glossy finishes. And you've also got this door insert that lights up and it's on the dash as well. And it's very DS, very, uh, very premium. But let's not get too carried away because there is still a little whiff of affordability about it. There's some cheap plastics hidden about and those chrome inserts on the dash and around the air vents aren't actually chrome at all. They're plastic, as are the inserts on the dash, on the dash and the door. With that said, I think this has got to be the nicest feeling leather steering wheel I've ever used. A quick note on practicality, it does feel very spacious in here. You've also got a big cubby here for your wallet and your keys. You've got two big cup holders, a few little smaller cubbies here and loads of underarm storage. However, the door bins suck, <laughs> which is really surprising. I don't know why that is. Now, kit-wise, the Sorento in this top-of-the-range four trim is kitted up to the eyeballs. There's this 10-inch touchscreen I mentioned earlier, which works in tandem with a 12-inch instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. It's got sat-nav, wireless phone charging, leather seats, heated seats. It's got everything, basically. But the one thing I did want to draw your attention to is the driver assist features. Now, alongside its very competent lane-keep assist and um, adaptive cruise control, it has blind spot monitoring cameras. And these are located in either one of the wing mirrors and the displays are actually shown on the screen behind the steering wheel to make sure you're not indicating into a lane when a car's passing you. I mean, how cool is that? Now, personally, I think the only real flaw in here is the functionality of the infotainment system, which is unusual because Kia, over the last few years, has gained a reputation for its systems just working and doing the job. I mean, They've tried to obviously make things a bit funkier with some of the displays, but I think they've just gone a bit too far and overcomplicated it. And I mean, that can be said for a lot of car makers at the minute. I mean, some of the screens, you know, some of the responsiveness can be a bit laggy. It can be difficult to find the main menu button at times. And some of the displays are just a bit too chic for me. And the sat nav, while it does work fine once your location's in, it can take a while to load postcodes and locations sometimes, depending on where you are. But Kia is definitely moving in the right direction. It's starting to get to the point now where it can add superfluous splashes of luxury and actually pull it off. I mean, you've got the, uh, let me find the menu button. You've got the sounds of nature feature in here, which again, is usually reserved for sort of more luxurious cars and it's just kind of like added sounds to add ambience to your drive or calm a crying baby i mean this is open air cafe if i want to go to rainy day which makes me need a wee uh, and they've even got warm fireplace Now, families are going to really care about backseat practicality, and thankfully, the Sorento absolutely nails it. First off, there's these wide opening doors, which make it very easy to get in and out. And once you're back here, there's tons of leg room. There's even enough headroom when you've got this optional panoramic roof. And there's also no hump in the floor, so moving about is very easy. In fact, you can probably walk about, let alone slide about on your bum. Now, uh, you've also got these built-in sun visors, very handy for babies or kids. You've also got a heated seat function in this trim built into the door. And something I really love is these built-in cup holds. are very good for sort of bottles of juice or water. Now, speaking of functions for kids, you also have loads of USB chargers dotted around, which is very handy. And this rear bench slides back and forth and it's so easy to operate. I mean, you can literally operate it with one finger. So kids shouldn't have a problem doing that themselves. Now, what about when you want to access the sixth and seventh seat? Well, speaking of easy accessibility and functionality for kids, all you do is press the button like that, 
seat shoots forward, always a nice feature. It's quite easy to climb in. And when you slide this seat back, you've actually got a few inches of knee room. So if you wanted to, you could slouch a little back here. It is definitely better than most in terms of space. You've also got a few little cubbies back here, another USB charger and your own aircon. Now, when it comes to getting out, it's just as easy as well because you just press a button again and off you go. Now, before we take a closer look at the boot, I just wanted to highlight a little built-in convenience feature. Now, when you have the car locked and you approach the boot and stand near it for a few seconds, let's say you've got your hands full of shopping and you're walking around, the boot will assume... Not working now. Work. The boot will assume you've got hands full... Here we go. <laughs> the boot will assume you've got hands full of shopping and oh you can't open it so it will automatically open it for you how cool is that i'm pretty sure it might be problematic at times especially if you just stood chatting to a friend but i'm pretty sure you can disable it anyway onto the boot now the boot has a nice wide opening which is really nice and although it is a bit high here so you do have to heave like to prams and shopping in a little bit it's got a nice smooth run and no lip so they will slide in once you've lifted them up now these rear seats are very very easy to fold up and down and when you want to fold that middle row there's a button back here to automatically fold them which is nice you get a nice flat run to those front seats now there isn't any underfloor storage unfortunately so the chargers will be floating around a bit but thankfully you do get a little groove either side of the boot to store this parcel shelf so it's out of the way and while it doesn't have underfloor storage you do get an extra two seats i mean there's not many plug-in hybrids with seven seats out there however the fev only sacrifices four liters of boot space which is really impressive and that means when you've got the third row down you've got 600 liters of storage space really good and with that third row you've got almost 2,000 liters and that's big <laughs> works now First off, the charging guff. So it will take around five or six hours to fully charge the Sorento Fev's 13.8 kilowatt per hour battery from a standard three pin socket at home. Or it'll take around half that time if you use a three kilowatt wall box charger. Now Kia reckons that on a full charge, you'll get around 35 miles of all electric range. We found that it's more like 30 miles, but to be honest, in a car this size, that's still pretty good. And this battery works in tandem with an electric motor and a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine to produce a total power output of 261 brake horsepower. Now, if you're new to the hybrid game or you just don't want to be fiddling around with loads of settings, you're probably best just going in auto mode. And this lets the car choose between petrol, electric and hybrid mode for you. And it's really good at staying in all electric mode, actually, even the slightly harsh acceleration. And especially when you're pottering about stop start traffic in the city and i really like that i mean it just means that you can make the most of its plug-in hybrid capabilities and those who are commuting back and forth to work and wanted to charge when they get there and wanted to charge when they get back will really like that as well and in auto mode on average we've been consistently getting around 40 to 45 miles per gallon now when it comes to tax the sorrento fev sits in the 11 percent bak tax bracket for 2021 and 2022, which is pretty low. The hybrid character does suit this Sorento better though, I think. I mean, when it's in regular petrol mode, the six-speed automatic gearbox can be a bit slow to react at times and can be vocal under harsh acceleration. I mean, it's not slow, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's a zero to 60 miles per hour sprint time of 8.4 seconds, but you are likely to get around 35 miles per gallon when you're just using the petrol engine with no electric juice on tap. In general though, the Sorento Fev is lovely to drive, although it does feel big and the ride is slightly on the firm side. Well, I say firm, it's just not super, super cushy like you might expect. And that's probably due to the 19 inch alloys that are standard on grade three and grade four models. And I, I actually think here have made things a little bit stiffer just to make sure body roll is kept in check in the corners. I mean, the Sorento, does handle itself pretty well in corners it's just when you're going in at speed in certain corners there is a hint that things might go a bit wobbly at times but you know let's be honest who's taking corners at speed in a seven seater 
And again, I've got to take some time to praise these blind spot monitoring cameras. I mean, I've been using my mirrors, I still getting used to using them, but um, you know, as well as an added safety feature, they are just really, really cool. In fact, it's the kind of thing that might sell someone on the Sorrento's upmarket legitimacy. You can just imagine showing off to your neighbors when you get back from the dealer with them, or blowing the mind of an elderly relative who still thinks Bluetooth is witchcraft. To a lot of people, annoyingly my friends and family included, Kia as a brand is still very much an afterthought, but the current gen Sorrento is a big stepping stone, especially with its luxury features, ample practicality, hybrid clout, and domineering exterior. I mean, this car does get a hell of a lot of looks. But it's 50 grand for a Kia, shouldn't I just go and buy a near? Yeah, all right, I get it. But that's probably gonna be, you know, second-hand car buyers saying that, and they're never gonna buy a new car. Plus, Kia's rich mix of high-end models and its registration figures begs to differ. People will pay for a highly spec Kia. Okay, the Sorento isn't perfect, but it's got loads of luxury features, usually reserved for more prestigious brands. It is a very competent hybrid, and it also has a seven-year warranty. I mean, I don't a Kia, too right I would. Remember when everyone was saying this about Skodas a while ago, and now everyone's like, ooh, Skoda. 